Hey guys, this is Martin again from Bug Bounty Service. Today I will show you another vulnerability type called cross-site scripting or XSS, and more specifically reflected cross-site scripting. So what is cross-site scripting? Well, in a nutshell, it's an attacker or a user can introduce their own JavaScript code, which is then rendered by the, reserve, uh, by the server and then reflected back to the client or the victim in the context of their browser. It's a very dangerous vulnerability because it can be abused, for example, to exfiltrate cookie values and things like that if the secure flag is not set. Okay, so uh, we start out here at the login screen. Now, um, what I want to show you is, for, for example, here you have a login.php, right? And there may be parameters which are hidden, which are not visible on the website, um, which are appended to, to, to the URL here, and but they're not visible, right? So uh, one way of doing this is sometimes you can go through JavaScript files and stuff and, and, and find them there. Um, uh, an easier way, what I find easier is there's a burp extension. So if you go over to burp, for example, and then you have your extensions, you can, you can install them from the BAP store. There's something called Paraminer, right? And I took the liberty and already ran this because it takes quite a bit. But basically how you do this is you take the request, the login request here, and then you right click, and then you say extensions, paraminer, guest parameters, guest get parameters, and that will initiate the flow. And once it's done, you go over to the extensions tab in the output, and then you will see what kind of uh, parameters it has encountered. So, it's, so in, in this case, there's two, one is the, the ref, um, parameter and the other one is go to right so let's have a let's have a try at the go to parameter so what I would do here is simply I say um, go to and then I put in like a JavaScript right like I put in a malicious payload and because they are often filtering um, the alert I use the confirm, right? Because sometimes the confirm is not filtered, but the alert keyword is filtered. And then I just want to pop up like a zero, right? So I do this and yeah, I need to, I have a blank in here. I need to remove this. So I do this and what you immediately see is that there's a hidden field now. Um, I have burp configured to show me hidden fields, right? Which is a, a setting option. And then effectively that's the kind of link you would send to a victim, right? So you would send this link to the victim and then say like, hey, can you please log in or something like that? And then effectively what you're gonna do is you um, let that person log in with the username and password and then see what happens. And there you go. There you have your pop-up. So the JavaScript code which I introduced was successfully executed. Now let's take a look at this uh, in Burp, what actually happened here. So effectively what, what happened was first and foremost, um, this one here, so basically I um, generated a GET request whereby I had this previously hidden parameter and I put the JavaScript code confirm zero in there, right? And that didn't work, remember that? Because I had the blank space in there, so I, I had to do this again. And then this is the correct code, right? Without the blank, without the blank in the, in the URL. And then effectively, if we now search for say confirm, in here, we will see that the confirm, um, it's actually put into a value tag here, right? So, so the JavaScript has successfully been added into the value tag. What you can see immediately, there is no um, escaping or encoding taking place. So my input is interpreted as code, right, effectively. So, and then the next step, when the post is actually being done, when the user enters the username and the password, what's gonna happen is it takes that JavaScript string and passes it into this script tag here for the top location href, which is effectively executing that piece of code when in the minute the post request is sent, right? And this is why you have uh, cross-site scripting vulnerability in this specific scenario. This is a simple case. It's called reflected because it's not stored. So when it's reflected, it means you need to generate the URL and you need a bit of user or victim interaction that the, the victim or, the, or, the, or the, the target actually clicks on it versus the stored one is, is stored in, a da in the database. And then it's merely a matter of browsing to that page to execute that 
malicious JavaScript code, right? But uh, but uh, the the reflected one is slightly less dangerous. It's still dangerous, but it's slightly less dangerous because it requires some user interaction and it's not persistent. I hope this makes sense. Um, and I will see you in one of the next videos. Thank you.